the last study on the jungle babblers was done in the 1970s by someone called Tony Gaston who came all the way from Oxford to do his PhD in India in Delhi Ridge. Jungle babbler, I think the name itself is a misnomer in every possible way. It is not found in the jungles. It is found mostly near human habitats. And I know now that they don't babble. There is meaning to their calls. If you go close to them, even though they are adapted to the presence of humans, they'll start getting very anxious for the lack of a better uh, neutral word. Uh, they will uh, flip their tails up and down, hop around on the branch, and they'll produce a lot of vocalizations. But then if you just let them be and then they start go back to their foraging, you will see a group of uh, uh, individuals, a bunch of individuals will be foraging on the ground. You will see one that has occupied an elevated post. So it goes up uh, onto the branch of a tree or a lamp post, whatever, some elevation, and it looks out and it produces a very soft vocalization. So it was almost as if it was watching out for the others that are foraging. And that was really the most fascinating behavior that really uh, got me interested in uh, these birds. What we know from our work is that uh, the birds produce these 15 different kinds of uh, calls uh, in uh, different behavioral contexts and by studying their behavior and doing some um, manipulative experiments using playback, we now know what these calls mean, if you like, and in what context these calls are produced. For instance, they forage in a group, but as the group foraging in one place, now they need to move from one place to the other, they need to move together. So how do they coordinate the group movement? So the bird starts to produce a certain kind of a call. And then they produce that call, which is what we call as a flight call. So they start producing this call and then they fly. So it's almost something is going on where there is a group level decision making that is going on. Then they have something which is called as a contact call. So while they are moving, if one is left behind and the group moves, then uh, it produces a certain kind of call. And this is a very common call. Then the group members respond back and uh, they kind of do it for a bit and localize where the left behind member would be and they come back to fetch it and then they go back together. So social animals who live in stable social groups, we expect them to have large repertoire size because they need to coordinate group level interactions. So they need to coordinate many different activities and not just produce one song to attract the female or to defend their territory. They have many different tasks, if you like. They are really such a misunderstood species. The first thing that when you, when you tell anybody about jungle babble, they're like, oh, the angry birds. And their aggressive behavior is, so when we look at the time budget, what proportion of their time they spent in aggression versus, you know, social behavior like playing or grooming each other. And we find that their aggression is less than 1% of their time budget. And so I really feel that, you know, someone really needs to rescue the babblers from the very bad reputation they have got about, you know, being the angry birds, maybe anxious birds, but certainly not angry birds. <laughs>